morning, everybody. How is everybody? Hello, hello, hello. This is Tom from Tom and Philippine Adventures. I'm going to talk about solar in the Philippines today, and if it's needed. We got Mr. Omer. That just he's hot. He just came inside. But anyway, you know, I've talked about this numerous times, but uh, I'm getting some questions. Believe it or not, uh, the emails are running in. Talk a little bit about your solar setup. So I want to talk about my solar setup. You guys notice 57.72 on the dollar to peso rate today. High five. Does not mean it's a benefit because that that can that I purchased of sardines has gone up from 17 peso to uh, almost 30 peso. So it's double. There you go. Okay, so uh, solar setup. All right. What I did, I started out basically, I bought one panel. And uh, what I did wrong is I bought multiple panels through the year, years, and I added to it. Well, each panel puts out a different uh, watt. They, they put out a different amp, depending on the manufacturer. The best ones I bought was from Germany. Uh, they make the best solar panels for, as far as I'm concerned. I don't care about Alibaba and all the other stuff. And everybody says these Germans, they, they know how to make the toys and they know how to make solar panels. Those solar panels produce 200 watts each and they're producing like crazy. All right, so I have a 1200 watt on the roof and I have uh, 350, 400 amp hours here. And, and what I mean is the battery is the source of the system. The battery is the one that is the heart of the system. Base your system on the batteries. Don't base your system on the solar. I thought you based it on the solar. I was wrong, but I've learned. You based it on the batteries. You base it on what you're going to do. So if you're going to have a fridge, a TV, a computer, uh, this, the satellites, your internet, your phones, the laptop, a desktop, air con, and so you add all those things up, a hot plate, an uh, inverter plate, Whatever that you have, you add all that stuff up, and then you find out how many watts and what amps that they're putting. Then you make a decision on which one is best for you because you never really not, not don't know. You're really not sure what that is. We sometimes don't realize that we often um, think that, okay, if I get this, this will be set in stone. You have to look at each device individually. So, for example, like I have a, a one-and-a-half horse here, and a one horse in the bedroom aircon. This one will put out different watts and that then that one will. And so you're gonna need you need to add those up and so you can have a complete system. Uh, the thing that uh, here what I have here I'm just gonna tell you, you guys seen this many times. I put a picture in there but yeah, this is something that what I have here is I have a charger controller and it's you can actually buy now what they call the charger controller that is a charger and inverter all in one. And they make them for, uh, make some nice ones now. You can buy about $300. I have a charger controller. They did, they had them available, but they were not that readily available for me at that time. They had commercial, they have what they call commercial grade stuff that's out there here in the Philippines. See, you guys realize that I'm in the Philippines. I can't go down to the Harbor Freight and get what I want to get. You know, I go. I can't get that. I can't get anything. So I have to do it best with Alibaba. And it does not mean that Alibaba is the best place either. Believe me. But the charge controller and an inverter. I have a separate inverter. It's a six thousand watt inverter. It's a pure sine wave inverter. I need to replace that inverter. That inverter is uh, three years old. It's doing fine, but it doesn't have the umps that I need. Charge controller is fine. It's a Bluetooth. It's uh, I can go in and find out what my solar is doing every day. I can find out what it's producing. I can find out the amps and the volts and all that stuff. And it's this is pretty well self-contained. I don't do anything to that. I have not done anything to it except when I install it, except dust it off. I don't do I don't touch it. I don't do anything to it. Believe it or not, it's been self-sufficient now for not three years, four years. So uh, I have a meter on it. For a, what they call a grid tie-in. So, for an example, if I want to tie it into the grid, but the grid requires a box, a special box, costs about $400. And the electric company's not willing to put one in, of course. 
So I can't get any benefit from that. But I have a, what you call, I have a grid tie and inverter, and I have a grid tie and I have a meter, a regular electrical meter. That meter cost me $200. I remember buying that meter. It's a, a reg, regular digital meter, electric company meter that you buy uh, for the electric company. And uh, all I have to do is flip a switch to take it from one grid to the other grid out. And it's really simple. So if I'm overproducing now, it just throws it off. Now the batteries, I want to tell you, you need to get lithium batteries. If you have lead acid or gel, be careful with them because if you have them inside the house, they make you sick. Um, because sometimes even the gel type batteries sometimes will put off an odor that you, you can smell, but you wonder why you're getting sick. It's because of the batteries inside the house. Now these lithiums are fine. They don't bother anything and I don't, I'm not worried about it. Uh, the the uh, batteries themselves are in a box with a battery charger, a battery controller, battery management system, which makes sure that the batteries are sustaining what they need to do. So uh, they're performing well and things like that. It's in a power box. The inverter, basically I have a strip cord on the inverter and it's slipped around. And the inverter, I let me turn this around. I'll let you guys just see it. So excuse my hand, hand print there. There you go. Uh, excuse the blanket there, but there you go. There's inverter, and you can see uh, you can see the plug that I have off of that, and flip switch for that. And the meter comes from electric company. This is what's outside on the box. Charger controller and a grid tie-in inverter, and that grid tie-in inverter is uh, for these two things right there. This is for those two working together. But that charger controller does everything that I need it for it to do. And in fact, it it, it performs. Uh, above the call of duty. I don't have to worry about anything on that charger control. All I do is, uh, I can do anything. I can go on my phone, it's, it's, it's got Bluetooth, and say, okay, it's putting out uh, 800 watts. Uh, this is what the system being used right now. This is what the system is. Right now, I am at, uh, as you, you can see it, you probably saw it, 13.0 volts, it's charging up. And I'm putting out 220. Now this this ticker system set up on a 220. I don't have it set up on a 110. That's putting out 220. But uh, the 110 appliances are plugged into it. So the TV's 110. It's plugged into it. This laptop's 110. It's plugged into it. My phones are plugged into it on a strip cord, and there it's all 110 there. So uh, it's it's either or on this. This whole house is 110. So but that it puts out 220. That other house is 220 volts. 220 volts better. Uh, I did not know it at the time, but I did, when I ordered a house, I ordered 110 because honestly, they sell a lot of houses 110. And the guy taught me in getting 110 instead of getting a 220. Uh, so it's okay. He said, You'll save on electric. I did not know you'll save on electric 220 more, but it's all right. According to the Chinese, I save more on 110. The, uh, so the savings up here. My electricity bill runs about, uh, it runs anywhere, about $140 a month, between $120 and $140. Right now it's at $140, not because of my capacity is still the same. I'm still using the same kilowatt hours as I did three or four years ago. My three or four years ago kilowatt hours is $20 to $40. But it's increased that much, it's doubled, it's tripled, quadrupled, and it's gone up to 7000 not because of uh, I've used more power, and not because the air con's running more. I use the same. In fact, I was off two kilowatts last month. Two kilowatts less. My bill was seven thousand peso. Uh, that's a water bill. Seven thousand peso. They'll be coming here this week and they run the meter again. Of course, it depends when they run the meter and what's going on. It depends on everything and brown outages and uh, because what happens brown outages. And don't let them fool you. Don't think that these meters don't do this. When they, they have the spinner type, uh, they turn the power back, it's off, and they turn it back on. The spinner type will spin really fast. This digital is not supposed to spin at all. So what I did is I put, Ruth and I did, I don't want to put it online uh, because it's, it's not good. But anyway, we put a camera out there. So when they turned the power back on, uh, I had someone stand out there. And when the power came back on, you know, an hour or two later, they stood out there with a the camera on a stand. And that meter went like this. It's reading, I'll forget what it was, 7377. And it goes, 
and it goes to 7475 with a power camera. So, a uh, digital. So it dropped uh, almost 200, whatever that, whatever that meter did. Then it's stationary and then stayed. Uh, and then it would, it, you know, goes up like one every three minutes or five, ten minutes or something like that. And, uh, well, it depends if that's on or what's on in the house. I would love to share the solar. The key is to share your solar with your neighbors. If I had it's on, I would I could share it with the neighbors. And I probably could, but I'm not running lines, and I'm not running lines to the neighbor's house, so I'm not going to be responsible for that. Uh, because uh, there is, uh, I would need to add some more batteries, and I don't want to do all that stuff. I am going to add batteries to it for this. So, Unvaccinated. My friends are arriving here in Cebu this week, last week, and the week before last. Unvaccinated are coming in. They just have to go through quarantine. And so unvaccinated or arriving, shout out for them on that. I forgot to say that earlier. I went to do that first the stream. So unvaccinated are here and they're, um, uh, they just have to go through quarantine. Uh, I think it's in five days, three days, five days, something like that. And he's ready to rock and roll. So he's in quarantine for that time. So shout out for that. So that's really good. So 57.72, uh, if it gets up to 60, okay. Uh, I benefit, hopefully there's benefit to it, uh, but it'd be detriment to the Philippine uh, people, which uh, they're survivors, and they'll, they'll survive. I want to thank everybody for always watching my videos. Thank you so much for uh, always, always coming on the channel. Thank you, and I'll see you guys next time on Common Roots Philippine Adventures.